Right, this is a quick video on how to take an LFP, uh, SLT, and a SIG 200 um, to get the QNs out of it, the data out of this over IO-Link and Ethernet PWPLC to tail puck PLC. This is a PC10G. Um, so I'll just kind of go over what we need to understand since the Toyo Puck PLC will not take an EDS file, uh, we need to understand the size of the produce and consume in our instance um, assembly. So I'll be using input instance or output instance 101 with a total of 262 bytes, and the input assembly will be 100 for a total of. 328 bytes and the reason I say 328 is because we have to count to zero byte um, so first we'll just look at that um, kind of go over that setup so the IP address on that is 192.168.1.23 um, I've already got it set as a built-in um, Ethernet port now I go to details and I did change this do on the, origi the originator set my IP address, set my instant size, um, and then told it what byte I wanted to start at or what address and how many bytes. Um, so I did that for both originator to target and target to, to originator. And you see it's the same thing, 262, starting at EM100. Um, so that's kind of the range where the data comes in. If that doesn't match, it will not communicate. Um, after that, then you just download and um, you know write all the parameters to the PLC and once you have communication then you should be able to see data um, starting to come in here uh, monitor so if I go to EA100 or 0 you can see that I've got data here that's coming across and that's the LFP since that's the input I've already wrote a little bit of code here um, not a whole lot but just enough to kind of get the point across. Um, this is my LFP data coming in, uh, EM04 um, from the high byte, and I'm doing the high to low and the low to high. Um, so now that I've got that data coming in, I can come to my watch window. Um, so I move that, just direct transfer. And we have to break out the data because of the way the IODD file is laid out if you wanted to get this data in the PLC. Um, so if I come here and my IODD file, this can be found underneath um, the device. You just type in a 70 part number, come downloads, and then literature, and it's just this file right here. And it helps us understand the mapping. Um, so we get two bytes of data that is the level, but at the same time, it's you see these right here, so it's not 16 bits. Um, it's a 14 bit unsigned integer that comes in. So to get that data to look correctly in the PLC, um, I had to arrange it. So you can see that um, I'm taking four to 300. So EM004 is going to D300. Um, and then I'm taking that data here and I'm just breaking out those bits and I'm transferring them over. To get rid of those other two that we had. Um, so I took those 14 and I made another word, so now it's D400. And if I come here to my watch window, you can see right now it's reading about 68. I don't have a, a tube on this one, so the reading is a little bit off, but if I hold my hand on it, it goes to 200 here. You can see a 200 on the screen. Uh, you can see that D500 is actually the level or the percentage of where it's at. Since this is uh, 200 and I wanted a um, and then 100% being the max, I just threw a little bit of math in it down here and you can see I'm just pushing a 2 into there. The D400 is being divided by 2 which is giving me a percentage of how full. So if I hold my hand on it, it says 200 which is the max for this one. It should say 100 on it which is D500 that you will see here. So with that, um, the next thing I did was I brought my QNs in. Um, so you see I've got here QNT 1 through 4. Um, the position those can be set here, either be IO link. Um, so I've got four bits of that, and that is on my next byte. So 
since I'm on port one of my input assembly, the level started at the eighth um, eighth byte, right? Um, so that would be. Um, let's go here, and I started at uh, zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five six seven eight so that's how i knew exactly where that data was going to come in to start from my level so now if you look here on the next word now i'll get these four right here that are coming on that's my q at one through four so all it took was em005 eight through uh, b and that's how i got my q ants in right here after I transferred the data. So I came from the high byte and I moved it to 201 of the low byte starting there. And then at 201, I just broke these out and that gave me my four Q ints. Now to get the, the level of it, I actually did that inside of the SIG 200. Um, so first thing to do is you have to already have the, the LFP set up in, in level mode, um, but once you come to this page and you get the IODD file from the website, you upload it into here. I put the LFP on port one, I put it on field bus, and I put the IODD file in it. Now you'll need the actual IODD file from the sensor, not this file here, but you have to come to software. and then um, grab one of these IODD files, get the newest one uh, if you can. And then you'll download that and we'll put that into the SIG. And then you'll just select which IODD file, which port, LFP I'm putting on port one. The SLT, I put it in Logic Editor and put it on port two. So now if I come to Logic Editor, um, once I hit the clear logic refresh, it'll give me all these different things of inputs and outputs. You see, I can get Q1 through 4 out of the LFP here also if I want to. Um, but so what I did is I took the, the LFP, which is on port 1 or S1, and I took that into a divide because I need a percentage for the SLT. So all I did was to come here and I gave a divider of 2, and that gives me a percentage since I'm 200 millimeters. Um, worth of what this is set for I divide it by two so if I'm at a hundred percent then I should be at 200 on the LFP if you see the lights all the way up if I take my hand off it will go about 64 which is about 30 percent is uh, what you can see there if you're curious about what you're getting what data because you don't really have a debugger in here you can go to process data and then we can start to see the data that's coming in and out of the port um, now these are going to be in hexi, so if you need to um, convert it, you just got to do a converter from so 64 um, should be 100 in hexadecimal. and decimal. So, hope this makes sense, and uh, let me know if you have any questions.